Hey, Jimmy. So listen to this. I'm at the Sox game the other day, and that Pedroia, man. I, wait a minute. Did, did, you, did you just see that? Did, did that guy just take a flat piece of wood and twist? Look at this. Look at it. This is amazing. What, what, what do we got going on here? This is, this is killer. I need to get me some of this. Indeed you do, Mr. Boston Red Sox fans. Hey, welcome to another episode of Rob Unscripted. This time we're going to talk about uh, real-time design iteration, what you just saw on the screen there, me taking that, uh, that, that flat piece of wood there, twisting it up uh, in real time. I um, think you're going to enjoy this one. Again, I'm Rob Cohey, Industry Solution Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing, and I am bringing sexy back. And what I mean by that is take a look at this design. Uh, roof is kind of, you know, just kind of flat on this mezzanine here, and I want to sexy it up. So just as I've done before in some of the other video series that you've seen, is I'm going to take some of this information from Revit, and I'm going to use this information to inform my inventor design. So I'll just exp export this out as an SAT file and bring it into my inventor design so I have the actual building elements. But before I, I bring that into an assembly, I want to take a, uh, take a look kind of behind the curtain, if you will, to show you how I've set up this, uh, this particular roof design. It, it, it appears to be a flat surface. And <clears throat> what I've done is I've, I've done a loft here. And, and you can see I've got length, station one, station two, and each one of them has an angle. And also at the assembly level, I have those same parameters. Now what I need to do is I want to link these two parameters together. And I'm going to do so using the built-in functionality provided to us by iLogic. So here you can see I've got a number of parameters. Station 1 in one part equals station 1 in the assembly and so on down the line. So the way you add them is you just go and find the parameter and tell it which parameter from the part needs to be driven by which parameter from the assembly and voila there you go. So that's how I tell it to run the rule. Now I need to tell it which rule to run. Well with a little help from the from the iLogic guys I got I, I got some code here that allows me to be prompted a little dialog box that allows me to control the parameters the minimum the maximum so I can put some design intent into this as well not just drive uh, parameters but really say you know for station three here um, I want to be able to have a different minimum and maximum. So, for example, I'll start at 96 and maybe I'll go all the way up to 220 um, for this one. Now, on the other hand, for the angle, uh, it actually faded into the angle if you didn't see that, but now I, I want to go from 0 to 45, and I can also do negatives. So now that I have my iLogic rule tree set up, I can go ahead and call up the, uh, the command. So here little dialog box. Now I can use my wheel mouse to scroll back and forth and go through some real quick design iterations without going through a table. Um, rather, I can, I can see the changes happen in real time while I'm setting up my design. Now, that's pretty wicked cool. See, I'm new to the Northeast. I'm still trying to pick up the accent. I'm actually trying to pick it up. But as we go through here, you can see I can, I can widen this out. Um, and all it's doing is driving parameters that I've set up in the single part. You can say I can go through and I can twist this. And again, all I'm doing here is rolling my, 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 uh, the wheel on the mouse so that I can set up what this thing's going to look like. Now, I want this surface to drive a number of wooden panels uh, on a roof. So, you know, if, I'm, if, if my goal is to have a little bit more sustainable design in this house uh, and maybe use some recycled wood or something like that, I want to use these wood panels. And each one of them is a specific width, which is driven also from the iLogic table and, and so forth. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take and take that surface, and I'm going to thicken the surface. And uh, now I'm just going to go through, and I'm going to trim out what I don't need. Now, you thought I made a mistake, but I'll just reorder my browser there. And uh, there we go. And I have, now I have a single plank. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to save that off then as the next plank. So this one's going to be plank three. And take, check this out. All I'll do is I'll change the, uh, uh, the pane width one to the third iteration of it, and now I have my next one. And I'll go to the fourth and the fifth and so on and so forth. So once I have all 22 panels created, and there may be a better way to do that, guys, um, but uh, hey, this is my show. <laughs> so here I'll go ahead and put all 22 instances in, and as you saw before in one of my other videos, I'm going to use that same script that Brian Eakins gave me. And yes, there's... there. 
there are all different kind of ways to put these in, but this one demo is really cool, and that's my job is to uh, make the uh, <laughs> give you a show, right? So as you can see, it it automatically placed those uh, those uh, constraints in there for me. So now that I have that, I've got this whole thing using derived components driving each one of these components so I can go through and go through my design iterations like I had before and here I'm changing the angle and you can see it begin to twist each one of those individual components so again you know you'll notice with a lot of my videos uh, and a lot of things that I'm working on here on YouTube um, what we're trying to do is is be able to control a large amount of information through a single source whether it's uh, derived components shared parameters uh, or this functionality here that I'm showing you here with with iLogic I want to be able to control this entire system through that so now that I've got my system behaving uh, as I want it I can go through then and begin to put this in the context of the actual building that I that I uh, exported out of Revit and brought into Inventor. So that when I make my my real-time iterations here you can see that well do I want it to be 150, 210, yeah that one looks good and then the next one I'll control the angle so what what degree of twist do I want to kind of most closely match this particular building profile and my ability to kind of to do this in real time just by rolling a mouse um, precludes me from having to go through and modify these in a table so this is really really handy technology here um, and, and this is just scratching the surface of some of the things that you can do with the built-in iLogic technology um, I definitely encourage you to check it out but you know as you can see here this is this is this is pretty pretty wicked stuff so I'm going to turn this down to a negative five degree and now I have the profile that I'm looking for to include as part of my design. Now I'll add uh, you know the rest of the walls going up in, into the uh, going up into the roof to help support it and I'll use my new AEC exchange tools to prepare this 67 part assembly which is not very large to put into Revit. And just like that, I've taken a pretty drab looking, plain looking roof, and by using the iLogic functionality built into Autodesk Inventor, I was able, right here, to bring Sexy back. Again, hope you enjoyed this one, guys. We'll, uh, feel free to comment. Rate these videos, please. Uh, let me know how they're going, and uh, check out our manufacturing community at manufacturingcommunity.autodesk.com. Again, I'm Rob Cohey, and have a great day.